Hey guys, and welcome to another episode. Today in this video, I'm gonna show you how to do a cylinder compression test. Now, it's pretty self-explanatory with what I just said as to what I'm going to be doing. So I'm gonna be determining the amount of compression that's found in each cylinder in my Mini Cooper today. The purpose of this is to see if any cylinders are making more compression than normal, and you're making less, and if there's any anomalies between all four. Are they all consistent across the board? Is one of them wrong? Is one of them off? Is one of them more than normal? With a compression tester like this, you guys can determine that very easily. Once you have each spark plug removed from the car, it's literally a matter of just screwing this in, trying to crank the car over, and then you're going to be able to determine the health of your engine. That's enough talking for now. Let's get into it. To begin this procedure, you need to get your car up to operating temperature. So I turned on my Mini Cooper, turned it on for about 15 minutes, let it run, and got the coolant up to the operating temperature. Now at this point, we can start disassembling what we need to take off the car so that we can use our engine compression tester. Now next up, what we're gonna do is we're gonna disconnect each and every one of the leads that are going to our spark plugs because we need to remove each and every one of them. Now make sure that once you take them out, you remember where they go. So this one here, if I'm taking this out, of cylinder one, I'm gonna be putting it back into cylinder one later. So just twist it, pull it up. Sometimes they might be a little stuck, but just take it off and remove it. Now with this out, we can get access to our spark plug that's found inside the cylinder head. In order to remove it, you're gonna need an appropriate spark plug socket with an extension and your ratchet. Slide it down until you bite on and then take each and every one of these out. So with this removed, we're gonna set this aside and keep it together with the appropriate plug. To use the compression tester kit, we need to make it so that we're not gonna be getting any fuel into the cylinder while we're trying to operate it. So we need to disable the fuel system in some way. The easiest way that I find to keep it so the fuel system does not get any fuel is to remove the fuel relay. So that means that the fuel pump is not going to be able to turn on and supply the engine with fuel. The location of where the relay is will differ from car to car. Sometimes you'll have it inside a fuse box found in your engine bay. Sometimes you'll have it in a different location. For my Mini Cooper, I'm right now in the passenger side footwell of the car. So your feet would rest right here and found on this side, we have all of our fuses and relays for our vehicle. Now the fuel relay is right here and all that you do for it is pull it out. Just give it a little wiggle and it should come out nice and easily. Now I'm gonna keep this here because I don't wanna lose this relay because if we can't find this and put this back in, after we test the car, we won't be able to turn the car on. If we go ahead and open up our compression tester kit, we'll be able to find everything that we need inside of here. So to get it so that we can install the compression tester on our car, we need to use a hose and the appropriate adapter for your car. Now for my Mini Cooper, I'm using an M12 adapter that's gonna thread onto this hose. Once we have that on, we're gonna have a quick release fitting found on this end that attaches to here. So once we have that installed, we can then go ahead and see the compression reading for each cylinder. Now when you're putting this little adapter piece onto the hose, make sure that you only put it on hand tight. Do not use any tools to tighten this up because you have the possibility of damaging the threads and potentially breaking this tool in your engine. So we're just gonna tighten that up by hand, no tools, and that's good to go. So we can then go ahead and hand thread this piece into our cylinder head. I'm gonna start off with one side of the motor and I'm just gonna put this down where the spark plug was installed and just thread this in so we can get a good reading. So that's it, doesn't have to be super tight and you can see that we have our quick release fitting right here. We can then go ahead and attach the quick release part to the threaded end of the hose that's attached where the spark plug goes. It snaps in place and then from there, we'll have a gauge and we'll be able to determine how much compression each cylinder makes. Before we get started, we're gonna be taking a look at two different things. So number one, we're gonna take a look at the compression from at the moment, we're looking at cylinder four. Now I wanna see if cylinder four is getting the proper amount of compression that the car was designed for. So my Mini Cooper, John Cooper Works motor was designed for a 10.0 to one compression. So when I go inside the car to crank the motor, I should try to see 10 
on our compression gauge found on the left. Now, another thing that we're gonna notice is we're gonna try and see, even if you don't know the compression of your motor, when you have this compression tester in, you can see if all of your cylinders are reading the same compression. So cylinder four, three, two, and one, they all should read the same amount. So say if your car is meant for 11 to one, they all should read 11 to one. If you see any kind of anomaly, say if one's making eight to one, you know that you're gonna be losing power on that cylinder. And at that point, something in the engine needs to be replaced. More often than not, it's piston rings, but hopefully everything should be okay with this. So by just taking a look at cylinder four, we can see that it's between 120 and 150. So this right here is a pretty healthy cylinder number four. Now I'm going to take off the tester from cylinder four and move it to three and see if we get the exact same thing. Now it's also not a half bad idea to hook up your trickle charger or your battery charger up to the car because the car isn't going to be producing any power when you're trying to crank it over. It's going to be really stressed, especially if you're going to be doing every single one of your cylinders to determine the health. So I've got my battery charger set to low and hopefully that's going to be enough to keep it so that my battery is going to have enough power to keep cranking the engine. So we can disconnect the quick release part right here and then we can undo the hose that's going to our spark plug, or at least where it was. Now make sure that the entire thing comes out. As you can see, only the top part came out. We've gotta get the adapter that's also found down there. Now onto cylinder number three. Taking a look at it now, we can see that we're slightly, actually from what it looks like, above spec. So it looks like it's a little bit over the 10. So this right here is a very healthy cylinder, and it's a little bit more healthy than the cylinder we were just looking at. Now I didn't show you guys what happens when I disconnect it. So when you take off the compression tester, you wanna relieve the pressure that's found in the cylinder. So just push in this little button, and there you go. So now it's back down to zero. Now we can go ahead and take off the quick release and then move over the hose from cylinder three now to cylinder two. Now that's not quite as high as I would like. From the looks of it, it looks like it's around eight. Now I'm gonna give this another shot, so I'm gonna back this down to zero and then try it again. So from the looks of it, I'm making a little bit over eight to one compression, so that actually seems to be pretty low. Now I'm gonna finally take a look at cylinder number four. As for the compression test, that's basically how we go ahead and perform it. Now once you're done, once you have all those readings, we can take everything out, then we can put our spark plugs back in, our coil plugs back inside, and then we have to go back into the interior of the car and reinstall our relay for our fuel system. Now what's super important is you have to make sure that you tighten up each one of the spark plugs up to the proper manufacturer spec. Now you can find that out in your service manual. For my Mini Cooper, it's 19 foot-pounds of torque. So I'm just gonna set up my torque wrench to 19. Lock it in place, and then tighten up each one so that it doesn't strip and it doesn't break your cylinder head. As soon as you hear that click, you know you're done. Take that off and then go on to the next one. Once you go back inside your car, to get it so that it turns on on the first try, you wanna grab your key, insert it where it ever needs to go, turn the car on, but don't turn the engine on. So have it so the fuel system will prime and get the fuel rail pressurized. Once you've done that once, take the key out, do it two more times. You should be able to hear your fuel pressure build up because the fuel pump is turning on. Take it out and then do it one more time. And then once you do it this time, you should be able to turn the car on and it should go for the first try. Before I end the video, I wanna give you guys a couple quick tips. So when I was doing this, when I attached my little adapter to the threaded part that goes into the engine where the spark plug was, when I was taking this out, 
This unthreaded from there and the adapter piece was stuck inside the engine. Now, how do you take it out in that situation? There's not enough room to put a socket on there and you can't exactly get anything to pull it out. Now, what I did to get it out is I used a little bit of Permatex Blue thread locker. So this is the non-permanent kind. I put a little bit on the threads of here, installed it in the engine, so into the adapter piece, I threaded it in, like so. I let it sit for about five, 10 minutes, and then once, once that was dried, I was able to unscrew this, and the entire thing came out together as one piece. At that point, because it's not the permanent strength, you can undo this and take it off. Once you guys go ahead and do this test and you're kind of unsure as to what the actual dial means and what the number means, on the box, it gives you a lot of like outlined information as to what those numbers can mean. So if you guys are doing this test, the only way that you're going to be able to get a good reading is you're going to have to crank the motor over until the PSI gauge goes up and reaches the peak value. So the cylinder compression test is going to read the peak amount of compression that the motor will make. So if you do one quick crank over, it's probably going to bring you up to about 30 PSI and then 60 and then 90. You have to make at least five cranks on the motor to determine the health of each cylinder. If you do less than that, you're going to get an inaccurate reading. When you're doing this test, if the needle is going to go up a little bit at a time and a little bit more and then it stops moving up and it's not getting to the actual compression that your engine should be making, what a possible problem could be in that situation is a sticking valve. So that's actually an issue that I have with my engine and I'm going to have to go ahead and take apart the intake side of the car and walnut blast the entire cylinder head's intake ports to clean out all the gum. If you're doing this test on a cylinder and they say this cylinder right here is making more compression than normal. So say that this one here is making 11 to 1 where your engine is recommended and it's designed to make 10 to 1 compression. What could be an issue in that situation is you could have carbon buildup found on the inside part of the engine. So it could be anywhere on the back side of the valves, it could be on the piston itself, it could be on the cylinder walls, it could be anywhere. And because of that extra carbon, it's taking up space that the air would be occupying. So that's why you're getting a higher than normal compression reading. A cylinder compression tester will only tell you so much about your engine. If you want to find out where say a leak is coming from or why the engine is making a different compression than another, you're going to need to get a cylinder leak down test. And I'm going to show you guys in a future video. Once I have the video up, I'll have a link in the description box so you guys can check that out and I'll also have it in the outro. But if you use a cylinder leak down test, you can find out where the leak is coming from. Whether it be from your pistons, whether it be from your intake, whether it be your exhaust or even a head gasket. It could be anything and this will tell you where it's coming from. If you guys want to pick up any of the stuff that I use today, you guys can check the description box for links directing you to Amazon. If you guys have any questions regarding the video, throw them down in the comment section below, and I'd be more than happy to help. Again guys, thanks for watching, I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.